Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Today I wanted to share my experience on buying my very first lathe, the G0765 from Grizzly. After getting it about a month ago and having the chance to make some cuts and learn the basics, I have some thoughts. Let's talk about it. So as we jump into this video, I'm just doing some cleanup on the lathe ways and the compound with uh, this paintbrush to make sure any debris isn't there. I'm also applying some whey oil to all of the metal surfaces. This will just help me uh, prevent any flash rusting or any rust buildup uh, as I'm not using the lathe all the time. As you can see on screen, we have the turret style tool holder, which locks into four different positions, allowing you to hold four different tools. I do wanna upgrade this to a quick change tool post uh, eventually so that I can speed up my efficiency on parts. Right here I have some automotive feeler gauges that I picked up at a flea market a while ago for probably a couple bucks and they're all different thicknesses hopefully you can see that and this will allow me to set the center height of each of the tools. Here's the main tool I'm going to be using right now and that is for facing and some turning operations. The set of feeler gauges I already have there are set to the center height, so I want to show you what happens if it happens to be on the wrong center height. I'll remove one of these gauges and set it to the side and show you what happens to the work when you try to do a facing cut and the height of the center is not correct. So this is the new height that I have for this tool and how it will be supported underneath those set screws on the tool holder. This process of setting the tool height and double checking it is the main reason why a quick change tool post would be a large advantage to have here. I'm tightening up these set screws to make sure that the stick out of this tool isn't too far from the tool holder. This will help improve rigidity and uh, make sure my cuts operate properly. Just for demonstration, I'll be using this piece of aluminum round bar to talk about some of the things I'm learning about how to use this lathe uh, more properly. I'll tighten this piece of aluminum up in the chuck, making sure that the tension on the jaws is the proper amount. And here I've got some blue dicum that will mark the face of the aluminum so that we can see when cuts are being made more clearly on the video and for my own reference. Though it does require some time to dry, so I spin the chuck up at a low speed to help with some airflow to speed up that process just a little bit. Here I'm turning the tool post to the proper angle uh, to make a facing cut. And here is some cutting oil that I'll be using on aluminum. Later I will test out some WD-40 as that is also a good cutting fluid for aluminum. Now that the dicum is dry, I'm setting up to make a witness mark so that I know how uh, far in I'm making each cut as I go. Remember, as I make these facing cuts, we intentionally put the center height of the tool uh, a little bit too low so that I can show you what that looks like on the work when that happens. Even though these are light cuts, I do keep applying cutting fluid periodically just to make sure things don't overheat. With the facing cut done, I'll turn off the lathe and show you what the little nibbin at the end of this work looks like. This was caused by the center height of the tool being a bit below the center height of the lathe. So we want to add our shim back to correct that. Now initially you won't know what that distance is, so you'll actually need to take a measurement of the nibbin and roughly cut that in half so that you know how high to lift your tool. So as you can tell, this whole process of checking the center height with a facing cut, taking some measurements, readjusting the tool height with shims can get rather tedious uh, for every different tool that you want to use. But now that I have the proper amount of shims in, I'll adjust the stick out on the tool again, get this geared up for another facing cut, and I'll show you what that looks like with the proper center height. I'll be taking pretty light passes with these facing cuts, but I also up the speed of the lathe just a bit to help improve surface finish. And here you can see we've eliminated that nibbin 
and the surface is flat. Now right now that end of the work is perpendicular to the lathe, or at least it was, but now that I have removed it from the work just to show it on camera, I have lost concentricity. But now I'll set up the tool to properly take some um, turning passes. As you can see, I'm squaring up the tool post to the lathe chuck, and this is so that the tip of the tool interacts properly with the work. As the marking fluid dries again, I'll take a quick chance to wipe off any more of the chips that I've made. And here again, you can see me setting up my witness mark, which is just a light touching of the tool to the work so that I can properly measure how deep each of my cuts is going. At this point, I am using the power feed feature that this lathe has, which turns the lead screw at a certain proportion to the rate of the chuck, and that really helps with automating the process of turning, which can help improve surface finish. Unfortunately though, I still am learning the proper feeds and speeds for different materials, and on aluminum, I am getting a pretty rough finish that you can still feel with uh, your finger. As you can see, that marking fluid is still present, which is caused by me removing the piece from the chuck, which lost us concentricity from our original setup, and that marks that as a low point in the material relative to our new setup. Now I'm going to set up the lathe for some longer turning operations. I need to remove the live center that I had previously by backing out the quill against the tang and the arbor. Here's the drill truck and center drill that I'll be using to mark a center in this uh, work that I've got here. I'll add some cutting fluid to both surfaces, turn on the lathe, and this will allow me to mark a center that will actually let us put that live center back in and support this work from a longer distance uh, over the bed of the lathe, more than what would normally be possible, because even when we want to work on longer features on the work, we don't want to have a lot of stick out due to rigidity issues. Now that the center is drilled, I put the live center back in, bring it up to the end of the work, and I support it by locking the tailstock and the quill. As you can see, as I'm trying to make sure this is indexed properly, I actually do bump the lathe, which is exactly why I need to get this bolted down. This alone will improve most of the surface finish issues that I'm having. At this point, I've adjusted the tool to interact with the live center in a way that won't uh, damage the live center or the tool. I'm ready to take some longer cuts under power feed, which will ensure a smooth cut the entire time. None of these cuts are more than about 10 to 30 thousandths of an inch at a time, but I'm still getting surface finish issues due to those rigidity problems. I do try to improve the surface finish by using WD-40 as the cutting fluid, but unfortunately it doesn't do much better. On these last few passes, I am taking what's called a spring pass, where I am cutting at the exact same depth as the last pass. You need to do this sometimes because of the chatter that can happen or if you have rigidity issues, which is common in these smaller lathes. Here in a bit, I also tighten up the compound gibbs just a little bit to make sure that I'm not losing any rigidity in that area. I take my last few passes and see if the surface finish will improve with the WD-40 and by taking some lighter cuts at faster speeds. Unfortunately, it doesn't improve the surface finish, which definitely leads me to believe I need to bolt this puppy down and improve that surface finish. Here I'll show you the compound gib adjustment screws that aren't actually always included on these smaller lathes, but the Grizzly model does have them. I take an Allen wrench and very lightly tighten up these set screws, which adjust the gibbs inside of those dovetails. This will help with rigidity and also help solve a problem that I was having where the tool was being pulled into the work. And that's because these screws were not 
tight enough. Here you can see the surface finish on this aluminum and it's not very smooth. The main part of my fabricating needs for parts of this length will be lead pipe mandrels, so I do need to improve my skills on this front. The last thing that I did to help improve rigidity was remove the tailstock and adjust this T-bolt that connects to the cam lock system that this lathe has, and this really helped improve my center drilling capabilities. Which brings me to why I chose this lathe in particular. I've been on the hunt for a lathe now for about a couple years, and I've been diligently watching the Facebook groups, Craigslist, eBay in my area, and trying to find the right South Bend or Logan, but I haven't been able to find one that's close enough that I've been able to drive to. The only one that was, someone else beat me there to it, even though I was about halfway there with the cash in hand. So after that, I started looking into the import market, um, where the Harbor Freight didn't even make it onto my list. I only was considering seriously the Grizzly model and the Little Machine Shop model. The Little Machine Shop model has the advantage of a larger spindle bore and a chuck. But I went with the Grizzly because of the great customer service that I know Grizzly is known for. This machine isn't meant to achieve all of my goals that I have for fabrication, but it will allow me to learn valuable skills and produce a good number of the parts that I do need for my trumpets. We'll be diving into those parts in their own videos in the future. But for now, if you want to be notified when I post more videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks for stopping by the shop.